Aye. 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 I need a motion to certify closed session that the only items discussed in closed session were those items that were in the enabling motion and only those items that are in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act of Virginia. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Aye. Yes. 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 We have several motions out of closed session that we need to take care of this evening and uh, entertain the first motion. I move that the board exempt seven students from Montgomery County Public Schools for religious reasons. Need a, got a second? Roll call, please. Okay. Aye. Yes. 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 We have another motion out of closed session. I move that we admit uh, student A, effective May 8th. We readmit student A, effective May 8th. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Aye. Yes. 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 We have another motion out of closed session. I move that we readmit student B to Montgomery County Public Schools as of May 8th. Second. We have a motion and a second. And roll call. Aye. Yes. 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 In our final motion out of closed session. To move that we long term suspend student C through May 17th. Second. We have a motion and a second. Okay. Okay. May 17th. Roll call. Aye. Yes. 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 And that concludes all the motions out of closed session. The next item on our agenda is public address. And this is where the board sets aside 30 minutes with a maximum of three minutes per citizen to address the item board on items of educational interest. And at this point we have, uh, it looks like one, six people signed up in advance what i will do is call out the first name and then the uh, speaker after that person if you will step to the podium and please state your name and address and you have three minutes uh, we are do have a timing system electronic timing system that will alert you when uh, you hit two and a half minutes and then it will alert you when your time is up and i will begin with susan miller after Miss Miller is Kyle Curran. Grant. Good evening. My name is Susan Miller. I live on the Mud Pike Road. I'm a retired Montgomery County Public School employee, teacher, and a retired Radford University professor. Um, I spoke to you last week at the budget hearing with concerns, and I'm going to flesh out some of those concerns and ask some, I think, pretty pertinent questions this evening. You have comments and a letter from Dr. Ken Jones that you should receive or will receive. I'm not going to read all of my comments tonight as I have changed my mind about what I'm going to present. We know that being active prepares students to learn. Ironically, in support of that, in Tuesday's Roanoke Times, there were two articles that speak to that. Unfortunately, they were from other localities, not from ours. At this point in time, I can say with the new modified schedule that's being presented that we have engineered the leaving of physical education out of our middle school program. It will not be the same. At a time when evidence mounts, that public schools and their students are facing increasing physical and academic challenges while working within the tight constraints of funding shortfalls from the state, 
I am convinced that this is not the time to significantly reduce the amount of time students should be engaged in health and physical education classes. In fact, I am certain that adjusting the budget to save money by eliminating health and physical education offerings at the middle school level will actually, actually be very expensive for these students and for their health and also for us who will ultimately pay for their health care. In other words, less of a good thing is a bad thing, even if it costs a little more to protect. If many people have not spoken about the issue of reducing the amount of time in physical education and health education, it is because this has been kept the best kept educational secret in recent years. The parents have received nothing other than what they have heard. The students have received little information about what is to happen, and yet there are only three weeks in the school year yet for this to be accomplished. My other concern about this proposed adjustment is the addition of the equivalent of three athletic directors at the expense of health and physical education teachers. Athletic trumps physical education, really? I now have several questions, um, and I'd really like to have a response at some time. These are not written down. I will email them to you tonight when I get home, because these are things that I have put together this afternoon. I would like to have a copy of the information that was presented to the school board in February explaining the adjusted middle school schedule. I would like to know what information was presented about health and physical education at that time, and I would like to have all that information that was given to the school board that you apparently discussed that evening. I am assuming this is public information. If the decisions that were made on that evening in February Ms. Miller, I'm sorry, but your time is up. Three minutes is okay, up. Okay, I will email you these questions to you and also to the community. Thank you. And I really would like a response. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next person signed up is Kyle Coran. Next is, after him, is Ms. Mr. Brian Wimmer. Hi, my name is Kyle Curran. I live at 13 Winstream Court, uh, Radford, Virginia. Uh, I've been a part-time physical and health educator in Montgomery County Public Schools for three years now. I was looking forward to next year because I finally thought I would be, become a full-time full staff member of the Auburn Middle School staff. But it looks like due to the, to the cuts, I will not be in the county at all. The reason I got into this profession of physical education is because of my love of being physically active uh, loved working with kids and also because both of my parents have passed away at an early age due to health related illnesses. I needed to get into a profession that would keep people healthy and for obvious reasons I knew I wouldn't become a doctor. In Virginia, 31% of the children are either obese or overweight. Uh, this increased the risk of ADD, OCD, anxiety, and depression. It also increased the risk of cancer, type 2 diabetes, premature death, coronary heart disease and increased uh, health care costs. By, re by reducing physical and health education in our schools, we'll only increase these risks. Other things that will increase will be absences, discipline, and bullying issues. Uh, these days, everything is about test scores. Countries with lower obesity rates seem to have higher test scores. The only research I can find on this topic says PE can only help test scores and grades due to the release of neurochemical neurochemicals to help the students learn and stay attentive in class. Instead of reducing PE, we should be increasing it and schedule it before their students' hardest class, rather than lunch. In Naperville, Illinois, a school came up with a program called Zero Hour PE. It was an alternative reading course that was in the, that was in the gym. Students would take it before first period, where students would have to stay within a certain target heart rate. Zero Hour classmates showed 17% improvement in reading and comprehension compared to the 10.7 percent improvement among those who slept in and took the standard PE. I find it hard to find research about uh, to find research about increasing classroom time to increase grades and tests. Our kids already spend seven and a half hours in front of computers, TVs, cell phones, and other media sources. Do we need to give them more? With the new schedule you guys have come up with, uh, if we meet three times a week, one day would be for, for health. The other two would be for PE. This would reach the Virginia state requirements of 150 minutes for our K through seven students to meet. But if we only meet two times a week, one being health and the other one being PE, we do not meet these requirements anymore. Also, a lot of times PE is canceled due to assemblies, assemblies needing the gym, and for taking tests. Students can go the whole week without having PE. 
So I ask you to think back to your 11 and 13 year old self without having daily PE or having it at all in a week. So please, let's keep physical education daily for students' mind, body, and soul, and not to save a dollar. Because if the, the Ms. kids- Mr. Kern, your time is up. Thank you. Set a good example for the kids. Next person is Brian Wimmer. After Mr. Wimmer is Leslie Robertson. Hello, my name is Brian Wimmer, and I live at 3155 Curran Lane in Christiansburg. I'm 13 years old, and I'm in seventh grade at Auburn Middle School. I recently heard that the Montgomery County Public School System proposed a plan to change the physical education schedules and classes throughout the county and the middle schools. This includes eighth grade making PE an elective and sixth and seventh grade making PE switch between an A and B schedule, meaning they would only have PE two times per week and every other Friday instead of each day. How does this help middle school students understand the value of daily exercise? Changing PE schedules and cutting it down would result in many problems. Children will become obese or overweight, and children who are obese will become even more overweight. Obesity is a major problem today in the United States. Why do you think the NFL and NBA have established Play 60 and NBA Cares Foundations? Because they see the need for youth physical activity. Studies have shown that a person in middle school should receive at least 60 minutes of physical activity each day. As of now, we receive about 40 minutes of that in PE. We are taught to keep up physical activity as well at home. Many kids only do the physical activity in PE, and that's all the physical activity they get in a day. What would happen if the students in eighth grade didn't choose PE as an elective, or the ones in sixth and seventh grade didn't get enough physical activity each day? That would result in a big problem. More children will become obese and possibly get health problems such as diabetes and high blood pressure. Physical education plays a huge role in my life. I can say today that it potentially saved my life at one point. I used to be overweight and struggled a lot with my weight a few years back. PE helped me become a physical fit person I am today. I worked hard each day in PE and took the advice of my PE teachers and ate healthier and did more and more physical activity. I'm so thankful for that. Cutting physical activity in the Montgomery County Public School System would be a poor decision for the middle school students in the county. Also, what do you think First Lady Michelle Obama would think about all this? She wants to rid the United States of all obesity, especially in children, so they can learn to live a healthier lifestyle when they become adults. In closing, I challenge each of you to make one final lap before making your final decision. Thank you. Thank you. Next person signed up is Leslie Robertson. After Ms. Robertson is Eddie Tuck. Tickle, I'm sorry, Eddie Tickle. Hi, my name is Leslie Robertson. I reside in Blacksburg, Virginia. I am a physical education specialist at Price's Fork Elementary. I'm proud to have this opportunity to speak to you tonight about the direction of our school board has decided to take with the scheduling of physical education in our middle schools. May I take a minute to ask PE specialists in our county to stand? May I ask them to remain standing and have parents who agree with us that PE should be five days a week with a PE specialist instructing. I think you see those numbers with me as you look out into our audience. Please be seated, thank you. It is absolutely ridiculous to compromise our students' health, best practices for learning, and you're compromising their test scores as well. It is well documented the need for and importance of physical activity physical activity every day. Do you realize you're actually even contradicting your school policy, your school wellness policy? And in this policy, it states, the Montgomery County Board is committed to providing school environment that promote, protect staff members and children's health, well-being, and ability to learn by supporting healthy eating and physical activity. How? By cutting middle school PE? Our goals include, within that statement, our goals include we will provide developmentally appropriate physical education as defined by the state guidelines, which will include opportunities to foster lifelong habits of physical activity. The school board encourages and supports each staff member to serve as a healthy role model. Do you think that's a healthy role model to cut physical education? All school-based activities will be consistent with local wellness policies. Are we headed in the right direction with our local wellness policy? I can answer that by saying 
absolutely not. Also, it is stated that student involvement in other extracurricular activities such as inter, um, intramurals or any interscholastic activities shouldn't count towards that physical education at all. Where's the time in the day for the classroom teacher to meet these needs? We are physical education specialists and the ones who should be a valuable part of the team. Do not bench us. After all, Michelle Obama wants to be on our team. In closing, please consider these facts. The rate of childhood obesity in the United States has doubled in the last three decades. With this, rates of heart disease and diabetes in our children have similarly risen. The general poor dietary habits and physical activity patterns of our nation's children are of great concern and should be all of ours. Ms. Robertson, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you for your time and for your consideration. Next person signed up is Eddie Tickle. After Mr. Tickle is Barbara Skinner. Thank you for letting me come. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. My name is Eddie Tickle, and I live at 4235 Piney Woods Road, Christiansburg, Virginia. Now you are thinking about changing the way we normally have physical edu education due to budget cuts. I ask you to reconsider this. Childhood obesity is a growing problem. Approximately 17% or 12.5 million children age two th ages 2 through 19 are obese. From 2003 to 2010, these rates have slightly decreased from 15.21% to 14.94%. However, since 1980, obesity rates among children of the same ages have almost tripled. Children are estimated to need anywhere between 30 to 60 minutes of physical activity per day or about four to seven hours per week. We are also assigned homework in PE, and the phys physical education does count as some activity. So shortening the amount of PE we have will lower some students' physical education grades because some students in higher grade levels do not have time to get through the amount of, amount of physical activity required due to homework and extracurricular activities. If you make physical education an elective for eighth graders, there will be an empty period or you will have to hire more teachers to give more elective options. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. <laughs> Next person signed up is Barbara Skinner. Hello, I'm Barbara Skinner, 3583 Laurel Drive in Blacksburg. I'm concerned that building maintenance has not been addressed during this budget cycle. Superintendent Blackburn remarked in a recent meeting that they didn't include a line item for maintenance since they removed it from the operating budget as a cost savings measure for the last couple of years. I know that some of the additional $575,000 allocated for MCPS in fiscal year 2014 is to cover roofing expenses, but roof repairs are outside the maintenance described by Cardinal Tech. In addition to routine maintenance, Cardinal Tech has estimated that we need 11 million over the next five years to correct maintenance deficiencies. At this point, I see zero allocated for either routine or deficiency maintenance. At the March 10th school board meeting, the board approved a capital improvement plan which lists an annual budgeting for maintenance at $2 million per year. But where is this money to come from? Presumably, this will be discussed with the Board of Supervisors at the scheduled May the 14th joint meeting of school board and Board of Supervisors members. But isn't that a bit late? This seems to be quite a disjointed budgeting process. Spending transparency to the public is lost when funding is disjointed. The Code of Virginia requires that school districts report per pupil costs on their websites. On the MCPS website, the total operating expenditure for fiscal year 2013 is divided by the, our number of students to arrive at a per pupil cost of $9,679. However, this expenditure figure does not include the $750,000 allocation of one-time money or the $400,000 in additional funds recently provided for maintenance. It also doesn't include a school debt service payment of $932,223 from the school capital projects fund or $18,600,000 from a separate debt service fund. These expenses total $20,682,223 and increase per child cost by $2,177, giving us, by my calculations, a per pupil expenditure of $11,856 for the current school year. This community needs adequately maintained schools as well as complete and accurate reporting of expenditures. Thank you. 
That concludes all that has signed up at this time. If anyone would like to step forward and address the board at this time, please do so. State your name, address. You have three minutes. Seeing no one, public address is now closed. Next item on there, I will make one quick statement. The board does not um, respond to public address except under new business in which the board members may at that time bring up items they've heard under public address and ask clarifying questions of the superintendent and administration at that time. So at this point we don't respond, but we may respond later in the meeting under new business. Next item on our agenda is uh, payment of the bills. I need a motion to pay the bills. Okay. My apologies. Consent items. Anything need to be pulled under consent items for discussion? Not, no, not, nothing needs to be pulled other than the fact that if you see there, the Montgomery County Educational Foundation um, there were several grant proposals <clears throat> uh, ranging from $203 up to $1,000 and um, we're very pleased with the fact that uh, these proposals have come before the school board. Uh, many of them have to do with literature, many of them have to do with STEM projects and um, there's one in there, Struggle of Africans, African Refugees, there's another one that Lego, uh, Legos for, and that uh, Legos for a high school, and there's another one that uh, includes all four high schools. So if you get a chance to review those uh, in your spare time, board members, please do so. We're very pleased to have those uh, come up as proposals. Okay. And, and I'd just like to you know, state that they are proposals for us, not that you all are granting those. Right. It's just the proposals. Exactly. And I have one question under item D on the grant proposal for the Governor's STEM Academy. It says all high school. So does that mean that if the grant is funded that we'll have a STEM Academy at all high, four high schools or the Academy is going to support all four high schools? I wanted to understand who, the, who it's going to serve. This is the program that uh, Patty and Rick did the presentation on uh, before, and it's my understanding that it would start with one school but then expand. I don't know if Patty or Rick are here this evening or not. Or Laura. I see Patty in the back. Yeah. Patty, can you speak to that? You're talking about um, D. D, yes. yes. Item D. Mm -hmm. and so we've chosen Christiansburg High School as that is where our current robotics program which is the capstone to the Academy is located but our goal is to move the program out to the other schools as funding is available so would other students be able to from the other schools yes. be able to participate in this yes. okay all right. Yeah. all right thank you and this this uh, Patty I'm sorry <laughs> this refers to that funding that you're talking about or we're the future? Act future we're actually building the Academy on existing funds on okay. what we have now on programs that are already in place the VDOE is not contributing much money towards it any other discussion on consent items items are approved on consent next item is the personnel report need a motion to approve the personnel report so moved any discussion on the personnel report? All those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carried. <clears throat> now we get to pay the bills. Need a motion to pay the bills. Move we pay the bills. Second. Any discussion on the bills? All those in favor signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Bills paid. Next item on the agenda is the superintendent's reports, recommendations, and announcements. Ms. Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Jones. The first item this evening is the 2013-2014 operating budget and the school nutrition budget. 
This is the budget that you have seen before and the one about which we held public hearing recently. Um, Brenda, could you um, put, put the budget up so that folks could see it? I'm, I'm not going to speak at any length about it, but I think we should put it up there. The um, operating budget is in the amount of $94,688,186 plus a one-time supplement for capital improvements in the amount of $575,000 and the school nutrition budget in the amount of $4,158,426. Um, we're requesting this evening that you approve the budget and authorize the superintendent to provide these budgets to the Board of Supervisors. Um, I've made no changes to the recommendation since uh, you saw it last week. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. We now have it open for discussion since this is an action item. Board members, any discussion on the budget as presented by the superintendent? Mr. Chair, I'm really pleased that we can give our increases this year to all of our employees. Wish it could have been more, but I'm very grateful, Ms. Blackburn, and all who've worked to make it happen. Very, very. Any other discussion on the budget? The last line item there, the $906,000, that line item is related to a decision that was made prior and is not a part of this budget. Is that correct? That's correct. You approved the item uh, in, in, at your February 22 <coughs> meeting, and it just reflects in here that it's an expenditure that won't be made. Ms. Blackburn, can you highlight the items on there that are um, being that are using one-time funds for this next year? Yes, I would be glad to do that. It is. Um, let me find them. It's actually on the separate page. It would be the next page of this budget. Brenda, can you make it scroll up? Thank you. They are capital increases that came specifically from the supervisors for the express purpose that they're listed in the um, description, and that is replace one-time funds for building repair and maintenance plan, uh, $250,000. That's largely roofs. The second one is to replace one-time funds for 21st century classroom improvements, which is the technology enhancements that we've been working on for the last two and a half years. And then the final one is replace <coughs> one-time funds for the replacement of aging school buses. And this $175,000 will add two new buses to the school division's fleet for a total of $575,000. <coughs> Any other discussion? Questions? I'll two things I want to <coughs> point out, or just at least share one of my concerns. Um, while we did receive an extra uh, extra 525 from the Board of Supervisors to help with capital money, and we've now used that money on what I would term reoccurring expenses that we will have to make sure that we have funded next year, and that's that's a concern for me. Uh, it's not that I don't support what we're doing with the extra the money we receive, but it does. We, we start our budget at this number next year uh, because we are putting it into to reoccurring expenses. Uh, again, I'm not seeing that, that I disagree with that, but it is a concern considering I'm not sure that the funding challenges will go away in a year and that we're not back here and hopefully not making cuts again next year. Uh, I'm hoping that's not happening, but that um, possibility always does exist. Well, Mr. Jones, I would like to recommend that we all, teachers, parents, community members, talk with our state legislators. We are the eighth wealthiest state in the nation as they've been cutting our budget over the years. What is it now, up to 10 million? So I just hope we can come together and talk with our legislators, go to Richmond. I mean, it's ridiculous. I'll leave that at that. Thank you. I have to echo what Ms. Albritton has said. You know, we're one of the top 10 wealthiest states in this country. Yeah. We are. 
supposedly the richest and the most advanced country in the world. Right. And comments are made about giving us a couple of million dollars, making it an easier job for us. Well, it sh we shouldn't have to beg for money to educate the children in the United States of America, <coughs> to pay the teachers and the other employees who help to educate our children in the United States of America, more or less Montgomery County. And it is getting, it is an absolute shame that we have to do that. And comments are made for a couple of million dollars, it's gonna make our job easier. Because a couple of million dollars does not help to educate the children in Montgomery County the way they deserve to be educated and to compensate our employees the way they should be compensated. So I would hope that folks who are making those comments think about where we stand in the world, where we stand as a state in this country, and we're begging to educate our children in, for, in public education. It's a shame. It is an absolute sin, quite frankly. I think it's also worth pointing out that, that um, part of this budget, and when I did the math, I think the, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a, a little off, but about $2.2 .2 million of this budget is uh, unfunded mandates from the state. It seems like some people don't understand what an unfunded mandate is, but let me point those out. First of all is the uh, sequestration. Uh, we have to pick up the cost of that. The second unfunded mandate is the shift of the VRS. The state has decided that the localities can now start funding the retirement program, and the state uh, should no longer do that. Uh, the other one is the uh, salary increase. Uh, the governor said, yes, we'll give you some money for a salary increase, but not for everyone. He only gave us so much money for a salary increase. He didn't give us enough money to give everybody in the district an increase so that we had to pick up nearly, was it about? 1.6 million. 1.6 million dollars to be able to get the money from the state to be able to give everybody a raise. So, you know, when you add a lot of those numbers up, um, that's 2.2 .2 million dollars and of unfunded mandates by the state of Virginia that the county is picking up and the taxpayers are picking up. Uh, so remember, uh, if your local legislators need to understand what an unfunded mandate is, I can give them some examples of that. Any further discussion? <clears throat> we have a motion on the floor and we have a second. Uh, since it is budgetary, we will be um, approving both the operating budget and the school nutrition budget at the same time. So I want to make sure that people understand it. Any questions on the school nutrition? I think it was pointed out that the cost of lunches will increase by <coughs> 10, cents. 10 cents next year. So make sure we understand that. Since this is budget, I'm going to ask for roll call, please. Ms. Aubrey? Aye. Ms. Bond? Yes. Ms. Foster? Um, since I did not agree with the middle school class schedule changes, I'm going to vote no. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Well, members, we have a budget. Thank you. This seems like it's been a long time getting to this point. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about budget just about every meeting for forever, so it's good to be able to move forward. And again, I. I um, reiterate some of the statements of the board and especially the fact that it's really great that we're able to do something with compensation for employees this year. In fact, I've been here three years and this is the first significant uh, increase that has occurred uh, in compensation in that time. A next item are the salary scales for and, and salary placement procedures for 2013-2014. And we're recommending these for your approval this evening. They reflect the 2% increase and they re reflect a four per an additional 4% increase to all salary scales, which include VRS covered positions. Um, we have in here some of our implementing procedures that we are recommending initial salary placement of new employees starting July 1, 2012 or later to be aligned with the MCPS colleagues. And as you know, We've not been able to address the salary schedule over the last four years. And so for that reason, when we bring new employees in, 
since our employees have been sitting on the same scale on the salary schedule we um, take that same number of years off the experience level of incoming employees and place them appropriately on the salary schedule uh, as a matter of practice, the administration is requesting the authority to, to adjust the salary scales up to 11 cents uh, to allow an employee's monthly salary to be equally divisible by 12. Present these for your approval this evening. I seek a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Second. Now it's open for discussion. Board members, questions, comments? Okay, so just so we're um, understanding because you're adjusting for 12 years mm -hmm. uh, 12 months mm -hmm. and other things to balance the scale out it does not truly reflect in some places a 2% increase for everyone no my understanding is that everyone has a 6% increase if you're a VRS employee and that you are 2% uh, if you're not a VRS employee that would not get that. So, Roger, I'm going to ask you the division question. Do you sure. round up or do you round down? Or walk, okay, on the 11 cents. The 11 cents is just in there to facilitate us on the accounting system so we don't have to carry it out to four decimal places and employees then when they get to the end of the year we're not shorting them a penny or two that's what the 11 cents is when we compute the salary scales it's everybody gets the uh, uh, the two percent those that are VRS affected positions then get the additional four percent uh, the only thing that doesn't change are some of your supplements so your your master's um, supplements and your doctorate supplement doesn't increase by 2%. They stay the same, but they did increase by 4% because they're, they roll into the VRS. Uh, that'll cha change a little bit uh, on them. But everybody's base pay and the salary will increase by 2%. Right. And that 4%, they basically just have to pay back into VRA. That, yes. Yeah. Then the employee then will pick up the full 5%. We did 1% last year, 4% this year. They'll now pick up the full 5% required by the state for the VRS contribution. VRS, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Board members, any additional questions, comments about the salary scales? I'll do the same thing on this one for the salary. Roll call. Aye. Ms. Bonds? Yes. Ms. Foster? Yes. Ms. Franklin? Yes. Ms. Dryden? Yes. Ms. Yes. 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 Thank you, board members. Our next item is a grant proposal for an after-school program continuation for Shawsville Middle School and Christiansburg Middle School. Um, this uh, grant is in cooperation with the Boys and Girls Clubs of Roanoke Valley and in partnership with Montgomery County Public Schools. They have applied for a Virginia Department of Education 21st Century Community Learning Grant in the amount of $598,029 to cover a period of three years. This grant would allow us to continue the program with the Boys and Girls Club that currently exist after school and summer at Shawsville Middle School and Christiansburg Middle School presenting this for your approval this evening. I so move. Second. Board members, discussions? Yes, as a founder of the Boys and Girls Clubs in this region, I am really very grateful that these two sites have continued. Our hope was to broaden, but I'm so grateful that these sites have continued and I hope we get this money for these after school very special programs for our young people. I'm very grateful. And to all who made it happen and continue to make it happen. Board members, any other comments, questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Your motion is carried. Next item is a Verizon easement at New Auburn High School. 
uh, there is a map attached for your review. The um, variance is a routine procedure. It will allow a permanent telephone line on the school property to service the new Auburn High School. The new easement is located on the portion of the property that has been planned and constructed to accommodate the telephone line. The easement will not adversely affect the school in any way and has been in the design phase of this project. We're ask, asking tonight that the board agree in concept to the easement and request the Board of Supervisors to approve and grant the easement. Need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on the easement request? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is supplemental appropriations. This is a process that we routinely go through when we need to uh, move appropriations into the uh, appropriate accounting streams. In this instance, uh, we are requesting the Board of Supervisors for supplemental appropriations to the 2012-13 school operating budget uh, in instruction, $128,731. In administration, attendance, and help, $10,000. In operations and maintenance, $77,456. And in non-instruction, $118,175 for a total adjustment of $334,362. Recommending your approval this evening. So moved. Second. Second. Board members, any discussions on the supplemental appropriation? These aren't additional funds we're requesting. These are funds no. that have already come to the system, but they have to give it back to us. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is carried. Next item is our Special Education Advisory Committee. We're submitting this evening uh, two names for the board to consider for approval for addition to the Special Ed Advisory Committee. These uh, community members and parents are Sabrina Davidson Radcliffe and Shannon Cozart. I'm not sure if either of them are present this evening. If you are, if you would stand. If not, okay. So I'm recommending these names to you this evening for addition to the Special Education Advisory Committee. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, how do they um, come about getting these positions before us? Christina? We advertise on our website on the MCPS special education part of the website. We also have our current advisory members um, and staff within school buildings letting fa families know about the opportunity. They then, uh, the individual then submits a letter of application. The special advisory uh, committee approves those and then they're forwarded to you. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And have we had parents on in the past? Yes, new, it's, it's it, a committee it's, it's basically ongoing. of parents, yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> Next item is um, request for approval for two additional courses. Uh, this is in accordance with your policy for addition of courses. Uh, the first one is a geometry readiness course. And as you know, the new math standards were implemented in 2011, 2012, and we're continuing to try to close the instructional gaps that have become evident as we have been teaching uh, the new standards and as we have seen the assessment results from the first round of testing. What we're finding is that some students need more assistance than can be reasonably provided in the regular geometry class. Therefore, to get students more ready to take and pass the standard geometry course, a readiness course is being proposed for elective credit. It does not meet the, the uh, math graduation credit. It's basically a preparatory uh, intervention to assist students who are struggling with geometry. The, the choice is to take the students where they are and help students build skills for success or to continue to have students frustrated and turned off to math. The readiness course is approved by the state 
and it is designed to build skills that will enable our students to close gaps and then take geometry for credit. I was reading some interesting uh, data today and it said that of the high school graduates, I mean high school dropouts that are interviewed, 84% of them cite that their struggle with Algebra 1 was a key reason that they chose to drop out of school. And so this group of students who are now struggling with geometry are frequently the same group of students that struggled with Algebra 1. Um, the readiness course is, as I said, approved by the state and designed to build the school skills that will enable students to close those gaps and then be successful. Over time, as new standards are better incorporated at all grade levels, there should be less demand for the course. That's the expectation. In the meantime, course implementation will build student confidence in math and will support future success and assist in resolving issues with math performance that we are currently experiencing at the high school level. That's the first one. The second one is a, a course for our special education students. And I'm going to ask Christina if she wouldn't mind coming up and telling us a little bit more about this one because she's much better versed in it than I am. Thank you. This is a career and technical education course which is taught by a certified career and technical ed teacher and co-taught with a special education teacher. It would be, it's a, it's a, um, an accredited course through the Department of Ed, so it would be open to both general education students as well as special education okay. students. How long is the course? I mean, is it, it would well, it's a year-long course or semester course in the block schools. Okay, so this, this goes year long. Yes. Mm -hmm. And will it be involving the business partnership that we have currently now? Some of those. Folks? I'm sure that Mr. Weaver is working on parts of those. I mean, I think with all of his courses, he works very hard to to implement that piece. Well, I think this is great for someone who works in the private industry mm -hmm. and has seen the inability of some of our students to transition to the workplace. Right. I think this is great. Lisa Holland and Rick Weaver have worked very hard together to uh, create this for us. Yeah. Have other school systems implemented this? It's, it's on the approved list from the Department of Ed, so I'm sure we, we used to have it years ago in our division and uh, something much like this, and went, so we're trying to revitalize it. I'm really excited because our young people do need this. Mm -hmm. Really do. I have to agree with that. I was very happy to see both of yeah. these courses. Yeah. And it, the uh, introduction uh, course for uh, employment should be mandatory for at least a six weeks. I agree. This is brought forth for information. So there's no action. That's correct. It's for information this evening. Next item. I have a question on the geometry um, at the governor's school they had to change the math program for youngsters coming in their first time because they weren't prepared um, and in my opinion what what the governor's school did is they kind of dummy down the the math program to bring students forward so that they could catch up is this, is this geometry readiness a situation where we have to take a look at our elementary and middle school math in, in relationship to our, are we doing this in that vein or can you help me with that? We're, we're looking at math K-12. In fact, the, the new standards affect everybody in mathematics. So as the new standards are implemented at the elementary school, we also expect that we'll have an upward ripple effect. And so, as uh, I mentioned when I was talking about the course, that as we get better at teaching the new standards, that I would see a decrease in the need for this course. So this is basically, it's an intervention right now to support those students who have not had solid instruction in the past that would allow them to demonstrate the new math standards in geometry. For the future, 
mathematics you know bills year after year so yes it's very much something that will be influenced by what happens with kids in math classes from elementary all the way up thank you Next item is our 2014-2015 school calendar. And let me find my little notes here. Uh, the board expressed an interest in the uh, opportunity to perhaps consider an early approval of a calendar for 2014-2015. Um, following that board discussion, Dr. Graham convened the committee that had developed the 13-14 calendar and their work has provided a calendar which ends the first semester prior to winter break and a calendar which has a more traditional uh, calendar with exams after the holiday period and a start date of mid-August. Uh, the reception in the schools was pretty evenly split. We had nine schools that supported the um, calendar that ended with the uh, exams before the holiday period and we had 10 schools that supported the calendar that um, had exams after the holiday period. So I'm presenting these this evening for you for your information and discussion. And if you have any input from me, I'm not prepared to make a recommendation on this one this evening. I'm still kind of evaluating the data yeah. myself. Were the schools split between elementary and secondary on that boat? Or? Um, yeah. Lois, as I remember, the, the um, I may ask Dr. Graham if she wouldn't mind, I think it was four of the secondary voted for it for one calendar and four of the secondary voted for the other one and about the same with the elementary. So, like I said, I'm still trying to ferret through the data and figure out if there's a message myself. Lois? You're exactly right. It was split. Elementary was split amongst themselves, and secondary was split amongst themselves. Even among the high wow. schools, they were split amongst themselves. Wow. And we so did we did the um, ending the semester before the break this year, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. So yeah. how did that how that how'd it go? I mean, have we? Yeah, I've heard lots of positive comments um, from instructional point of not having that break for students during the semester of a more consistency with the instruction is what I've heard. And, and I guess that goes to my next point. I mean, to me, the calendar is about what is instructionally sound for the students. Right. And, you know, what we, at least my time on the board, have always heard concerns and complaints about the fact that we have this long break and then we come back after Christmas and we have to hit the ground running and there's a lot of makeup time. It's just not a conducive to learning. It's not conducive to the to the overall uh, environment from an academic standpoint. Right. That mirrors the comments that I've heard, okay. especially for That's secondary students. It's less of, a, of an issue for elementary sure. students because they don't have an official, you know, exam period or right. ending uh, projects and that kind of thing. But the feedback from secondary schools was largely very, very positive with ending yeah. before the winter break. And I'm interested that the elementary school people were split, you know, so that's interesting. I think what factors into this year is the summer mm -hmm. um, net being so short and the sure. start. It, so that's the second kind of thought people going through people's minds in addition to the semester ending before Christmas. Well, I think so the, two, the two things that you need to take into consideration, I'm looking at the yellow calendar, and, and it, it looks great to me. It looks quite similar to the one we've had this year. Um, the the semester ends before the winter break, right. and I think that's again educationally sound. I agree with you, Mr. Jones. I really think that that's educationally sound, and I think that um, you're also correct that it, that most of the teachers have and parents have let me know that they like that. They don't like the exams hanging over their children's head or hanging over the children's head through the break and then coming back and trying to scramble to get that right. taken care of. So <coughs> I like the yellow one very much. With the yellow one, how many weeks off would uh, teachers have uh, between? 42 days of summer break for the teachers and 52 days of summer break for the students. There are eight days difference between the two calendars if you look at the summer break. There's only eight days difference between the two calendars. 
Correct. So, and if we went, and we know that these next two years are going to be an anomaly because yeah. of the way we're doing it, but in a normal, if you were, in a normal situation of the starting and stopping of school, how many days off do you know what it would be? If we didn't I'd have, have to go days. back and count that, but I, I think it's about 10, ten more days, days difference, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So how did the block schools uh, handle getting everything done before the uh, winter break? I did not hear concern about that, so the break that we had must have, I so didn't hear a concern. We came back and had, um, after the holiday, we had a couple of days as a, um, a work day when we right. came back from the holiday, so that would have given them the, given their time to get everything done. Okay, because that's been a concern with the other colleges only having one day to restart, and I heard comments that it was, you know, you know, kind of rushed to get everything taken care of, but in the end, it was nice not to have that hanging over. Plus, there have been years when the month of January, we almost barely went to school. Right. And trying to fit all the testing and everything else in uh, can become a challenge. Is this for approval or? It's for information tonight. This is the, it was in your board update, and I think this is the first time you've seen it on your agenda, so routinely we would bring it to you twice. Okay. Any other discussion, comments on the calendar? Thank you, Dr. Graham. Thank you, not only for answering our questions this evening, but for chairing the committee and also to the folks who served on the committee. Our next item is our routine uh, monthly update on facilities. I've got Dan Baronado this evening, who's gonna present that for us. Good evening. Let's see, mobile units, the one at Kipps uh, was moved to Falling Branch. Pretty much everything done except the digging uh, the, and the installation of the AEP's power line. And we're doing a little hiatus for SOLs and we'll complete that uh, at the end of the year and have that ready to go for next year. Uh, replacing the roofs, I reported last time that uh, we were analyzing the bids bids came in they were uh, two only two bids they were twice the estimated cost so we worked with the consultant who designed them uh, tweaked the design uh, clarified some things uh, for the bidders called a number of other bidders to get their input and we've re-advertised that and we're hoping to get to the, the better prices in a, about and how, how much a did week. they come in approximately two, twice the amount so they were estimated around a hundred and ten thousand a hundred five thousand dollars each they came in over two hundred thousand dollars each is it are we also seeing an increase in materials the price the cost of materials are starting to go up again mm. apparently right. the the other factor was only two bidders and that's uh, odd okay uh, for us so uh, we're rebidding and hoping to get the better prices and still get them done this summer. Uh, we've been working extensively on planning the summer moves that we have. As you know, uh, we're gonna move out of Auburn High School in early June, and we'll move Blacksburg High School out of Blacksburg Middle School. We'll move Blacksburg Middle School over to Blacksburg. Then towards the end of the summer, we'll move Auburn High School into their new school and then Blacksburg High School into their new school. All that's being coordinated, the, one of the larger things we did in the time since uh, we've met before was select uh, the moving company. Uh, we had an RFP and we had a team that selected a moving company, it's a local company. We met with them and the overall team yesterday and they're gonna meet with each school uh, over the course of the next 10 days. Can I ask you a question about that? Sure. Um, there's not about a week that goes by that at least maybe three people tell me that a teacher at their school or a someone has told them that it's definitely not going to open on time and we're going to have a split schedule like they did before. I don't know where this is coming from, but can you please answer 
the correct response to that? <laughs> the, correct, <laughs> the correct response is uh, we've always been on a very tight schedule. We're still on that tight schedule. Each month it's adjusted <coughs> to come back in to uh, coordinate with things that happen during the month. Uh, we're still tracking uh, for the end of July for Auburn High School and we're uh, tracking Blacksburg High School in two phases. Uh, the classroom portion uh, for uh, the end of July and the rest of the building uh, towards the end of, of August. And those are tracking. They're very, very tight. Uh, anything they're can happen. We, we, <laughs> we knock on wood. Uh, Blacksburg High School, we, uh, we've been Auburn High School, we gave tours last week. Uh, Blacksburg High School, I just got back from a tour, uh, and we'll continue that for the supervisors and the school board through the end of this week. And uh, uh, we, we think it can be done. Uh, contractors telling us uh, they can do it. Our consultants who are managing, helping us manage the problems, analyzing the schedules and, and what's coming up, uh, say it can be done. It's just going to be very tight in my opinion it will be like most of the other schools that we've had is it goes right up to the end lots of coordination lots of give and take and but I believe we'll, we will get in and we're tracking for that but at well, this okay. time there's been no administration decision to be on a split schedule absolutely not you know obviously we're gonna build in a security plan because if something happens, you're going to expect me to have school. So there will be a plan. But there is no intent to implement the plan. And uh, as we move into the second meeting in uh, May, we will try to give you a little more detailed information. You know, we gave you a, a chart that kind of showed a lot of bar graphs on it about things that were going to happen. And uh, starting at the end of May, we will try to keep you updated on that chart. I may just put it in the uh, board update and then show it as a part of our agenda here so that you'll be in the uh, loop on that. If you got a chance to see the projects, you know, obviously there's still a lot to do, but they're also very much so coming along quite nicely. Uh, so, Ms. did we just start? Ms. Blackburn and I had an opportunity to go with you, Dan, through the schools. And I need to say that I was hot, really impressed. It, it, it looks like a beehive. I mean, there's people. 125 the day we were there. Exactly, and every single one of them was working as hard as they possibly could. The the foreman on the job was like a father with a brand new baby that he wanted to show us. It was really great. Um, the school is beautiful. It's, it's coming along well. I'm not a construction type person, but it 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 looks like it's going to be close. But it looks beautiful, and I want you to relay that back to those folks. I will. Yeah. With with yeah. with terms like tracking, gonna be close, and this and that. Bottom line is we're all, we are on schedule, right? Yes. yes okay. Thank you. Say that again, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yes. Um, we are on we're all schedule. on the yeah. schedules. Thank yes, ma'am. And I agree with Joe. I I um, wasn't able to do the BHS, but AHS was very very special and I really appreciated the people who spent time to, with us and again they were very excited and passed it on to us and the moving company selected did we have several people uh, several companies we had uh, two proposals two. we had three or four interested at the end of the day we only got two proposals oh. and uh, well, we did our due di diligence called a lot of references and, and selected Bellevue, uh, VDOT completed that uh, guardrail extension there uh, on one of the early release days, uh, just at the end of April. Project that is not on this sheet, but just came up uh, last night, I wanted to tell you about uh, at the New Blacksburg Middle School, where Blacksburg High School is right now. In the auxiliary gym, uh, we have to replace the wood floor there due to uh, flooding that occurred from a broken fire sprinkler head. Uh, last night uh, one of the sprinkler heads way up in the rafters just a foot or so from uh, the roof the ceiling uh, an errant 
well, we had soccer practice in the gym yesterday because of all the rain and uh, kick ricocheted and I direct hit on the fire sprinkler, been a brass fire sprinkler, 30 degrees and uh, just broke, broke it. Fire department came, turned uh, the sprinkler system off and but by that time, uh, even though it's only 15 or 20 minutes, it uh, flooded the floor the way the floor is constructed in uh, three different layers of wood, uh, oh. plus a layer of polyethylene over rubber sleepers that sit on the concrete deck. The water seeped down through the uh, boards in the floor, and we had our custodians got all the water off in about an hour. Uh, we had Surf Pro come in. They arrived at 8, left at about 11, put all their drying equipment, uh, the latest and greatest that they had. Came back this morning with the insurance adjuster, Surf Pro, our staff, the, uh, also the contractor who put in the original wood floor to explain everything to the insurance adjuster and to Surf Pro. And, can't be saved, the insurance company, our insurance company uh, has verbally authorized us to uh, work with SurfPro to get the old floor taken out and we're going to get a couple of proposals for replacing the wood floor. That should be done. The process will take about four weeks total, about a week in tear out and about three weeks in put back. So that gym will be out of commission uh, for about a month. How many gyms are in there? Pardon? How many gyms are in there? There's two. We have a main gym yeah. and an auxiliary gym. Yeah. The main gym has some divider curtains uh, that can be used to help out. We're lucky in that we have the full-size gym at Price's Fork Elementary School. Uh, issue is not just PE, but also practice for all the teams. Yeah. And we also have full-size gym at Kipps. And the AD and principal at Blacksburg High School. You know, this hardly happened 24 hours ago, and they're already working to try to accommodate uh, all the things that they have to accommodate. So, I wanted to let you know about that. Thank you. Uh, PTA and booster projects, uh, the restroom at uh, Kipps Fields is uh, finally complete okay, and open for business, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> no more going behind the bushes over at right. Kipps, right? That's what it boils down to. Okay. Uh, this is a top picture there. Uh, Harding Avenue picnic shelters under construction. That's the other picture. If you go by there, uh, you'll see it's, it's going to be a very nice project. Again, the, the PTA uh, people that are doing it has, are just great, and the people that funded it and uh, has building permit, and it's being checked by the town of Blacksburg, and it, it's going along well. Nothing new on those middle two projects. Uh, the GLE greenhouse is completed. Also, the raised gardens at Price's Fork are complete. Let me just make a comment on the Gilbert Lincoln's greenhouse. The Montgomery County Educational Foundation was pleased to say that we were part of that. They applied for a grant, received it, and we helped them build this. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Super. Yeah, and I'm just glad to see that our schools are getting the young people involved in planting and greenhouses, garden. I just think it's great. Right. It's a lot of upkeep, and the schools yeah. do that, and the teachers yeah. do that. And we try to not go too far out and try to right. keep it reined in so it's manageable. Uh, so. But it wouldn't have happened unless but somebody important. wanted to do it, and I really appreciate right. people within the buildings. I know they've been doing it at Beaks for quite a while. It's wonderful. This next slide is the same exact slide I gave you about three weeks ago. Uh, no update uh, yet this month from the supervisors on any of these schools, although you have seen that the proposals for the Blacksburg Middle School site are being vetted uh, through the town of Blacksburg.
superintendent wanted me to uh, go over the capital maintenance project since we got the $400,000 and I think April 19th and 17th, uh, she, uh, Ms. Blackburn updated you on uh, the priorities uh, that we've set uh, for those. And just to go over them, I wanted to give you an idea. The ones that are slightly shaded in green are the ones that we're are tracking uh, to be f fit in with that $400,000. The first two uh, are in process, planning process, uh, and they have to do with door hardware and security. And we are working, as you've been briefed by Ms. Blackburn, with the police and the sheriff's department on security uh, reviews of all of our schools and we're getting back from them uh, a number of different themes to address but a, a very a common theme is addressing the front doors and door uh, hardware and buzz in systems and that type of thing so uh, we've concentrated uh, the first bit of money on that those security items uh, the state has put out that they were going to offer grants of a hundred thousand dollars with twenty five thousand dollars has to be matched by the school system we don't have the details of that grant yet and we'll be working with our uh, security partners the police and sheriff to develop that and do that so we're re reserving twenty five thousand dollars in hopes that we uh, are able to get one of those grants. And the grants, the state grants, are specifically for security equipment improvements at schools, and they're up to a maximum of $100,000 to a division with the required $25,000 match. So that's what the $25,000 is set aside from the 400 for. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that's not a cushion? No. Okay. No. Mandatory. third project is under the theme of our structural improvements and when we had Cardinal Tech take a look at all of our schools they wanted an uh, engineer to go out and look at a couple things at Christiansburg High School which he, uh, we got a structural engineer who did while we were there uh, head custodian says has anybody ever looked at this and it was uh, a wall in a, not a big classroom the interior block portion of an exterior wall uh, that had shifted within its steel structural frame and the structural engineer thought it was best to uh, get that realigned and attached securely to the structural frame he said we didn't have to do it in an exigent manner but uh, he recommended that we do it so we're doing that and in fact uh, that's been in the design process uh, and that bid came back last week and I think it did come in under our budget estimate total projects going looks like it's going to be about eleven thousand dollars stall ladder and safety cages that's been on there a while it's under the safety theme while we're researching that uh, we thought it was going to be at CHS stage and Shawsville middle school stage turns out the Shawsville middle school stage is just under the height uh, limit of the new OSHA uh, hmm. rules but we found that there were two other maintenance ladders in a closet that go up to the roof of the new middle schools at both Blacksburg and Christiansburg that do need it. So those are in design going out for bid. Next one is uh, replacing the auditorium seats at Christiansburg High School and that's a uh, big job, 40 year old uh, seats well used. <laughs> uh, we've gotten every penny we could out of those but uh, main area in the county used for most of our public gatherings both external public and internal uh, our own gatherings uh, and uh, that project is in design and we hope to get that out so it can be uh, completed this summer it's tight uh, and we may have to shift that opening convocation but uh, we, we hope to get it in this summer and those items one through five account for, based on the initial estimates, 
$375,000 of the $400,000 that was provided by the supervisors for some maintenance projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Ms. Blacksburg sent you the whole list similar. You've seen it before uh, pretty much yearly. I didn't include the whole thing. There's still a lot on it. Uh, the other couple things I, I shaded in there uh, will most likely have to do. I was hoping we wouldn't have to do it. We had a leak in the uh, Eastmont High School large water boiler, and we plugged that leak, and then we were hoping to get by with the plug, and then just a couple weeks ago, uh, two more leaks sprang up. Uh, so we'll have to get to that and we'll either use our operating maintenance money or each year we get uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars for things like that to come up in our operating capital <coughs> maintenance money. And that and the same thing with the boiler burner at Beeks. We've had that and the one at Gilbert Linkus and Christiansburg Elementary. We have two boilers each there. About eight, nine years ago, we replaced one burner at each of those schools and the other ones are quite old. The one at Beeks, my, uh, our, our boiler technician is saying it really needs to replace, can't repair it anymore. And so th that is also probably going to get done this summer. Do we consider the one Eastern Montgomery High School a premature failure? Because, I mean, that school's not very it's, old. Uh, the, the school opened in 2000. It's 13 years old. Yeah. One of the things that uh, in Cardinal Tech's report uh, you know, they talked a lot about uh, hot water boilers, and they last, on average, uh, 15 years. Hmm. So this one's a little early. Others, uh, as they say in their report, are long past their due, but they're going. So uh, I don't know the exact reason. It's just uh, they've rusted through. I mean, I think everyone's had a hot water heater at home that's uh, gone bad, but. We talk about a building lasting 50 years. Or, uh, more. Buildings can last much more, but really buildings are made of systems, and different systems last different lengths of time. Right. Uh, hot know, water boilers, on average, 15 years. Roofs, on average, 22, 23 years. And different window systems, different things. So uh, not unusual. A little premature, on average. A question, and maybe just I've forgotten, but did the board approve that this is how we were going to be using the 400000 I put it in your update about mm, maybe four weeks ago, right. and nobody said anything about the recommendations. I put it in there as an information item. So we brought them back tonight in the uh, facilities update. Okay, but my question is, has the board approved that these are the projects we want to use it for? The board doesn't usually approve the individual maintenance projects. However, the board can certainly provide additional direction. Uh, that was the reason it was in the update. I asked the question because it concerns the $400,000 that the supervisors allocated. Yeah. And since there was much discussion about how that was going to be used, I just wanted to know if the board should have been approving how it was going to be used for those reasons. <clears throat> board members, comments, questions on what's been presented before you? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Um, why is it that, oh, it's for both, um, both Shaw, uh, Christiansburg High School and Shawsville Middle School replaced stage lighting and rigging, 350000 That's like... Uh, why is it so much? Down here, yeah. Oh, I thought it was finished. Why is it so much? <laughs> on the list. Yeah. Very yeah. complex job. Yeah. Very complex it, job. They're, they're expensive systems. There's more to them than you think. Just in general, there's more to a uh, facility than we see. There's 90% of the facility we only see during construction. And we get the ceilings and the walls put up, and it's all hidden up there. I'll go. Yeah. You see the effect of lights on a stage. Right. You don't realize there are three rows of lights above the stage. There's one out 
in front of the stage. Uh, it's all types of lighting. And at these schools, uh, it's the, the original light fixtures for the most part and the original light bars, uh, the original light rigging, and it's, it's CHS, 40 years old, and just about the same age at Shawsville Middle School too. Uh, of course, Shawsville Middle School was originally designed as a high school, as, and now it's a middle school, so it's less expensive. We, we don't expect to go back with the full high school production uh, lighting yeah. we wanted yeah. to cut back so. thanks so I guess to mrs. Franklin's point I mean this is what the superintendent is recommending we spend the four hundred thousand dollars on that was appropriated from the Board of Supervisors if this board feels that they want to make changes to it I think now's the time to, to step up and voice any concerns you have on how this money's been allocated this is what the superintendent has recommended it rec recommended it was put in our board update and now it's being presented to us it's not here necessarily as approval but certainly it can be brought up for discussion if we think that there's other priorities or we have concerns about how this is being allocated you know as you mentioned the, the list is very long and we've been seeing it for many years um, to the best of my relationship recollection when we're doing you know specific amounts of money for items that we revisit it as a board and say you know what the superintendent has recommended or not or where we feel the money uh, should be used I don't have a problem with the recommendation but I just think as a board we need to be with these types of funds these amounts we need to make sure that we're saying that this is where the money is going to be sent, spent. Okay. Board members, any further questions, comments for Mr. Baronado? Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, just to clarify, um, Is it the consensus of the board to move forward with the projects as recommended? I want to make sure I have a clear message. Again, I yeah. don't have a problem with what's being recommended, but I think we as a board should approve the recommendation. As a point of clarification, is that because it was a one-time special allocation? Because ordinarily I would not bring to the board a request to um, spend $65,000 on door hardware if I had it in a maintenance account. So I just need just to know specifically if it's because it's the one-time money. This is $400,000 that you're recommending, not just $65,000. So I believe with these types of funds, we as a board should be saying we're going to spend $400,000 on these items on our list because we believe they are the most they are the priority right now for the district. And that's that's the way I feel we should be doing business as a board. You know, if we're spending this kind of money, we should be approving where it's going. I'm, I'm very confused. Are you saying this because it's the 400,000 that was given to us? Or are you saying that on any time there's I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm confused. I think I was pretty clear. Um, we're spending. Are, are you talking about just this particular? No, we're spending four hundred thousand dollars of taxpayers' money. I believe it is a responsibility of this board to approve how that money is being spent. No. Sixty-five thousand dollars to do improvements here or there. You know, I want to know what we're spending it for. But when we're doing a group of items like this on a, on a list that is extensive, that we should be saying, yes, this is where we want to spend the money. And there should have been or, may sh or still could be discussion that there may be other areas on that list that we feel the money should be spent. The only thing I see over $65,000 would be the replacement of the auditorium seats. And personally, 
I don't think my job is to micromanage these five items. There's 10 items there. Um, the people who are the experts have come before us with the five items that are going to be covered by much of that money. And, and I, I just, I don't think I need to, to hear about it other than from what we've heard today. And again, I, I don't want to get into the micromanaging side of this, and that looks like what you're presenting. No, I, no, I am not. Thank you. In fact, may offer, I think we've kind of moved away from the actual topic here, and that we might defer this discussion to a retreat when we get to the retreat thing, if we need to do this for retreat. I understand, I agree, I understand where you're headed with both of them, but we're kind of moving away from the agenda item. I don't understand how we're moving away from agenda item. If this is if this is on the agenda it was an update it's not here for us yeah. presenting for us for information if we want to do something else with it then we need to bring it up under new business I will thank okay. you yeah thank you Dan final item that I have this evening is uh, J which is your calendar of activities attached for your information and uh, hope that you'll be able yeah. to attend some of these events <coughs> thank you Next item on the agenda is unfinished business. Board members, unfinished business. I'm not sure if this is unfinished or new, but I was wondering if we could announce to the public the um, personnel votes that we did tonight under um, uh, to uh, the supervisor of literacy and preschool and the new director of secondary education. Just give the public some more information about those two. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, your action this evening approved the um, transfer of Rhonda Baker from position of principal at Bellevue Elementary to the position of uh, supervisor for Title I and media and literacy and uh, pre-K, a number of other things. I don't know if Rhonda's with us this evening. Rhonda, are you here? Stand up. <laughs> Congratulations. And the second uh, personnel item that is uh, a leadership position that was approved this evening is the um, approval of Jennifer Weaver. And I've got Jennifer's resume here, just a second. Um, Jennifer is currently the um, Director of Instructional Services in Page County Public Schools, where she's been since August of 2011. Uh, she's also been principal of Rockbridge County High School from July 2006 to June 2011. Um, assistant principal at Rockbridge County High School. Uh, prior to that, she was a classroom teacher at Grafton High School and Heritage High School. And she will be joining us effective June the 17th pleased to have both these folks uh, accept new challenging positions in Montgomery County Public Schools. Any other items of unfinished business by school board members? Yes, the $400,000 that we were just discussing with uh, items to be repaired or replaced, I don't know that I have to go into that discussion again is my reasoning behind it. I think you all heard it. I believe we should be approving these things as a board. These amounts of money we should be approving. Uh, having something put before me in a board update saying here, this is what I'm recommending, is not the same thing as bringing it as an agenda item, saying to the board, you know, we have a list of items that need to be addressed in the system. Um, this, this is what I'm recommending, and then go for it with discussion from that. If there's other items that folks feel should be prioritized, you know, or like I said, I don't have a problem with what's being put before me, but as a board member, I expect to be voting on that. And I do not consider that micromanaging. We only saw 10 items on that list. Do we know how many total items were on the list? Uh, there's about, um, Dan, how many are there? 100, 125, there's 
a long, long list. You've had the list before. Yeah, right. um, when I wrote the board update, I wrote a line in there that said, you know, if a board member has questions or concerns, right. please let me know, and I could bring it. So I think there's a miscommunication uh, in that respect because um, that's why I didn't bring it as an information item because I hadn't heard from anyone that you wanted to uh, do it in that way. Dan, how many items are on the list? And the total value? Can you come to the podium, please? On the list uh, Brenda forwarded, there were 50 uh, priorities plus two under athletic facilities, which were replace baseball field, bleachers, CHS, build softball field on campus at CHS. Uh, there's a lot more to do than, than these, but we normally don't uh, get into the details of the ones f further down than 10 because we normally only stay up at state the total value again uh, at 50 with a number of them not estimated most of them estimated from a planning per standpoint uh, nine million two hundred ninety two thousand dollars Because of the way this money was given to us and all the discussion that occurred on the other side when the Board of Supervisors gave us the money, I feel like in this particular case especially, we need to take a hard look at the list and make sure we agree with what the recommendations are. I don't want to hear we gave you money and you did something else with it again. I don't want to hear that line again. So that's why I think we need to take a hard look at it. But they don't dictate to us how we spend it. We all know that. Okay. I don't want to have to listen to well, I don't well. listen to it. I mean, they can say it all they want. I don't listen to it. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> As I look at this list, I'm looking at hardware security improvements. I have no idea what that means. If you if you present that to me as some and, and you want me to approve that or disapprove that, how in the world am I going to make that decision? We've got an expert out here who makes those decisions. He puts them in chronological order um, as to the, the most neediest and. I don't understand how we are going to tell Dan, Dan, you're really wrong, and I want this done instead of that. That doesn't make sense to me at all. And if that's not micromanaging, then I don't know what is. And I think in, min we, in previous meetings, we've talked about this priority system and how the definition of that priority system, um, even since I've been on the board, and that is something that we have approved of the board, and so then, facilities takes that method and they come up with the prioritization and uses their skills to figure out what to fund. So I agree. I don't need to approve those details. That priority list is concerning facilities, not maintenance projects, which is what this, this list is. Again, the total amount that that list comes up to has no bearing on what I am saying. I'm saying when these types of decisions are being made with these amounts of money, we as a board should be not just bought, given to us as information, but bought to us as an agenda item that we act on. And that is to say, yes, we agree for this expenditure for Montgomery County Public Schools. I believe that is our duty. Well. <clears throat> I think we've got some divergent opinions and I think we're not going to solve it here. That's a reason why I'd like to have been encouraging that we take the capital and the facilities uh, to the retreat discussion and continue to have that. Also, what's really not included, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but we still haven't had any discussion on the Cardinal Tech report and related to that as it relates to facilities and maintenance and capital planning, correct? Other we, than just how you prioritized it when you did the meeting with your capital plan. Right, but we had we didn't have the Cardinal Tech report by that when we had that, right? We did? Okay. My memory fails me. So any further discussion on that? Any other unfinished business by school board members? 
Um, my question is about the middle school physical education yes. program. New is that going to be new business? New business. Oh, I thought we'd already discussed it before. Yeah. We haven't. Oh, okay. Board retreat. I we had. <coughs> it was on we the had one uh, July the thirteenth was the top vote getter, but it wasn't a unanimous vote getter. And Dream is shaking, saying, I can't do it, can't do it. I'm out of town, or else I would change it. So, <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you, board members, other than, you know, unless you want to, I can get to it here. Do we want to do it perhaps during, during the week, say have dinner and have a retreat, rather than Saturday morning? <coughs> Phyllis and Dream, I couldn't okay. attend on Saturday the, the 13th, everyone else could. After that, it was pretty much all over the place. The next possible one was Saturday the 27th, and then I was not available, and Penny and Phyllis is now available. Um, I, yeah, July 13th, that was available. You know, that's, we had, we, we had three, um, three dates in June and three dates in July, or basically three weekends in July, in both those months, and we can't seem to pull our schedules together. The uh, all the dates now in July. I'm sorry. All of the dates in July, I'm now available for. <laughs> all the dates now in July, you're now right. available for. Mm -hmm. uh, that still wouldn't help us. <laughs> I knew, but I just. I'm just trying. I know. If I'm, I'm looking at the the overall matrix here, and it's still, that's great. But. Have we looked <coughs> starting like a Friday afternoon at two o'clock? Have we looked to see if that would work or do we just want to stick with the Saturday? We've done it in, I mean, we've started our full retreats mm -hmm. on a Friday afternoon at like one or two. And we went till five o'clock in the afternoon and had dinner and then and, uh, and adjourn for the evening and come back the next day. Uh, you know, if it depend upon the agenda item, it, uh, and you know, I, I put out a couple of agenda items for the board to, to consider in one of the recent uh, emails. That's but partly my fault because with doing it that way, I lose a day and a half of work, and that makes it hard for me because I don't have any kind of paid vacation or or any kind of paid holidays. So for me to lose a day and a half of work makes it a little bit difficult. Opposed to if we just did it Saturday, then I'm only losing one day instead of a day. So that's why I requested that it be that way. But we're only looking at six hours on a Saturday. My point is, could we do it from two to eight on a Friday rather than eight to two on a Saturday? Right. It's still six that hours. That's my thing. Pick one or the other, but both days, mm -hmm. you know, makes it tough. So, but that's kind of why we went in that direction. I even, I mean, I'm I'm not opposed to the Sunday afternoon after church hours. I mean, right now, it, it, there's no, we can't, we can't pull it off in June or July until we have some, somebody freeze up a weekend, which pushes us into the fall of the year, which I think is too late. My personal opinion is it's too late because I think we've got some things we need to address before the beginning I mean, of the next year. I can year. set up another one of those with just Fridays and see if we just get back. Y'all want to try Friday and see how Friday works? Sure. I know. I know when July is uh, in June, it's probably not going to work well for me, but July is pretty open. Okay, so don't want to do Fridays in July, okay. please. Thank you. Thank you, board members, on that. And now it takes us to new business. Can I start one before we get into a long discussion? Sure. <laughs> um, I need to know if we have a policy on school athletic fields that are rented out to private um, organizations or private schools and when that happens where does the rent money go does it go to the individual school or does it go to the county I, um, I don't know that off the top of my head I believe it goes to the individual school but I'm happy to put that in the a memo to you or in the next board update so that you have the exact policy information and what happens if we have a baseball field rented out I mean we're fighting for baseball fields and then we find out that there's another school renting one of our fields um, 
and then what happens if Parks and Rec decides they need that field or the school needs that field for one of their teams? How does, you know, when are the contracts written? The priorities are for the school and then Parks and Rec. So let me put the policy in and try to answer your question completely and then if I haven't answered it, uh, we can discuss it. But probably better than me trying to search for the policy and be sure I tell it to you exactly right. Ms. Albritton? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to bring up the whole issue of um, uh, scheduling for physical education in middle, middle schools. Okay, I'll start if you're, if you're finished. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. I just wanted to be sure so we discussed it. What's your question? Well, I thought we had to make some decisions. No, we don't have to. No. No. Yeah, no. uh, administration makes all the decisions. What? Okay, I'll start and I'll maybe help clarify. First of all, the school board doesn't make the schedules for the schools. So it was not our decision to move physical education in a different way. This board voted to change the scheduling for middle schools. That started this. I did not agree with that. And I most definitely do not agree with limiting physical physical education you know, for me for me and many other children PE was one of the best things that you did in school it helped me build self-confidence it helped me build skills that I use later on as a very good athlete for Montgomery County Public Schools which also helped me with leadership skills that I still use today you know, I think back on that sometimes, I'm going, wow, I learned that in the sixth grade. I, I remember in elementary school, you know, and, and certain kids who went on to excel in athletics, it started at recess. Friendships that I normally would not have made with children in the academic realm, I made in physical education, you know. To be, for some of our children, to be able to burn off some of that energy and sit in the classroom and learn or have that self-confidence because they did something on the athletic field or the playground, that I can do this in the classroom, is physical education. You know, we need to be moving. I actually believe in the workplace it should be mandated that we do some movement during the period of the day for that. You know, I would enjoy it and need it. You know. I have always been overweight, but when it came to that athletic field, it didn't matter. It did not matter. And with some children where they did struggle, I can remember helping them understand, you can do it. Come on, let's go, let's do it. You know, I cannot, I cannot fathom that at middle school, which it seems like we're trying to turn into high school, that we're not gonna have or be able to offer PE every day for our students. I just cannot imagine that. And if our classrooms increase because of that, and you talk about discipline issues and bullying in those PE classes, because I've seen that go on too. And if you have more children in there, how are the teachers going to monitor how that goes on, takes place too? I, you know, I think this is absolutely the wrong way to go for Montgomery County. It goes against everything that's out there saying how. Being active, getting that exercise, moving, helps you in the classroom. So I think we need to take a strong look at what's going on with this. As far as being able to offer other extracurricular or uh, electives in schools, especially the smaller ones, if we can't justify having those classes in those schools now because of the lack of uh, students' participation, how are we going to say we're going to do it now that we just give them a, another opportunity to do an elective other than physical education? We still may have 10 kids that we couldn't justify before. You know, 
I'm, I'm just not clear on where we're going with this. I know where we're going with this, turning the middle schools into high school. The 15 positions that were saved by going to the block schedule are going to be absorbed through attrition. Those same 15 positions would have been absorbed somewhere else across the district through attrition. It's done every year. So I don't know that what we did with that schedule did anything than what, than what we normally do, absorb positions through attrition. You know, putting the kids in front of uh, the teachers for a longer period of time, for more instructional uh, needs, I think it's gonna backfire on us because they're gonna be so zoned out because they have not been able to move that many of these kids are not gonna achieve at the level that we think they are. And again, the board did not make this decision to do PE, so don't blame us for that one. But yeah, the board did say, you do block scheduling, now you figure out how to make that work. Well, I, I just wanna say too, it's, um, everybody knows I'm for athletics and stand up and you know, have three kids that are very athletic and love sports and, and I too can't imagine seeing not having PE every day. And I did vote for it because I'm a person I believe you gotta make, make every minute count. And I think most people do believe that way. And that's just how my profession runs. Every minute has to count. But that, I had no idea to think that we would be giving up PE. And I think sometimes um, middle schoolers, maybe, and this is my own personal opinion when I say this, don't need the choices. You know, a lot of times students don't always make the best choices at a young age because they choose what's easy. And even though PE is fun, they may see something that just may target their interest. And in that, those years, I just don't think that they're maybe capable of making the decisions they need to make in their life. Having a 13-year-old, and I use my own children as my own compasses sometimes because I do know it and I see it. And I just will tell you a little story my daughter, who's 13, uh, both my boys were, you know, had zero body fat, and, and she doesn't walk in those shoes. And I think it hinders her a little bit from being athletic because up she's a little larger, and she shouldn't feel that way. Miss Franklin, you're exactly right. She should not feel that way, but I think she does. But we both got that cold a couple weeks ago, and I could tell she had lost a few pounds. And it sounded like a herd of elephants. I said, why don't you go upstairs and jump on the scales? She had lost seven pounds. She was so ecstatic that she had. So that tells me right there what, how we feel about ourselves is being in good shape, maybe. And, and that encouraged her to, you know, say, hey, mom, I want to start walking with you. I want to, I want to get the rest of these pounds off that I've got that I need to lose. So, and, and I ran it by her. And I said, what would you think if you didn't have PE every day? She said, mom, don't, don't do that. No, I need PE every day. So for me, I agree. I think we've got to look in a different direction. I don't want to make it hard for administration, but we've got to find a different solution than not having physical education every day for this age group. Can we have some clarification as to what happens today in middle school? Um, do students have PE every single day for the entire school year no. currently? Not every day. And right. At this point, I'll try to answer that question uh, to the best of my ability. Um, you have different scheduling models at each of your four middle schools. So some of them have PE every single day, but there may be some that have it a semester and not the other semester. Um, I think one of the interesting facts and and probably rather than for me to speculate on anything, you know, I would suggest that you allow me to put the current schedules for middle schools together and show them to you, and that I give you what is being tentatively looked at. You know, people have bantered around numbers like the uh, physical education class sizes under the schedule that's being considered go up in the 40s. That's not true. They range from 19 to 36. And that's not too large for a PE class. Um, they are um, 
some of them are designed so that kids could have physical education every day if they wanted to, but all four of the middle school models ended up choosing a six period day. And what happens in a six period day is you have math, English, science, and social studies, and then you have two periods to fill. And you can do one of several things with those two periods to fill. You can require that one of them be something and then a student only has one other choice, or two if you're choosing by semester. Or you can make it a block type of thing so that kids get three choices, but they don't have as much time in any one of the classes. And so it, I think it would be best, rather than me to give you partial information, for me to put everything I know about the schedules in your hands and put it on your agenda for May 17th. You have never directed in your policy manual or in your procedures or anywhere else that physical education be taught every day at any grade level in Montgomery County Schools. It is that physical education shall be provided and it's guided by the SOQs and by the standards of learning from the state. Uh, any of the schedules that I've seen to this point meet all of the state standards and they meet your current policy as it is established. Right now, generally elementary school students have physical education uh, twice or maybe three times a week. And high school students have PE two years and then not at all for the remainder of their high school career. So it's really kind of interesting that the only place in the entire uh, schedule that PE is mandated every day for every kid is uh, grades six, seven, and eight. Uh, a lot of people think that it's not gonna be offered at all for uh, eighth graders, and that's not the case. It would be required for eighth graders unless they ran into a scheduling issue and needed to be waived so that they could get a foreign language or an advanced math if they wanted it. And we do that now with kids in exceptional situations because we try to work the schedules to be in the best interest of students. So rather than me you know, giving you a lot of informal information, I think it would be best if I give you the hard facts and let you decide what you'd like to do with them. I'll place it on your agenda on the 17th. And would you do me a favor? Health education is included in PE or is it considered separately? It is included in the physical education curriculum. So on the day that Right now, it could say PE, but it would really be health ed. It is all mixed up because the health well, ed standards are, some of them are as simple as um, getting along with others as a health standard, how to work with others. And so some of the health standards are met every single day in every single activity that you do, whether it be PE or even in a regular classroom. So it's not like health like you might think textbook health all the time. It's about healthy skills for a healthy so, lifestyle. So we could have five days of PE, but that would also be considered health, or we could have three it, days of PE many, and it could be considered health. Many times the health parts of physical education and health can be incorporated in the physical activities that go on in a classroom as well. So it's not necessarily three days you sit in a classroom with a health book and two days you go out to play or do, you know, basketball or, you know, some other sport. So it's a variety but, of things. But, but I'll do. give you that also okay. in writing. Yeah. Thank you. Bob. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments? Yeah, again, this goes back to the state. The state the state has given us mandates as to what we do with the PE classes. They've indicated, and I don't know the exact numbers, but we're well within <coughs> the state uh, policy and and I think that's wrong I, I, I agree with the fact that um, we should have PE every day from second grade or first grade on up through 12th grade um, when I was in high school which was 100 years ago we had PE every day yeah um, and uh, things have changed obviously but they don't change here in this room and they don't change here in this county they change at the state level. And I'm going to go back to the same thing that we've said over and over again about the fact that the state 
doesn't seem to really have an interest in specific parts of education. Public education. Pardon me? I'm sorry, public education oh, too, yeah. today. Public education, and, and this is just part of that. And I, we've, we've got a new kid on the block, and it's called the new schedule. And I've got a, I've got a youngster, a grandchild, out in the Midwest who's learning a foreign language in the third grade. And I would love to have all of our kids learn a foreign language in the third grade fourth grade and on up because she will have an, a foreign language from third grade on up through high school but it's not going to happen we can't do that we just can't afford to do things like that um, our hands are tied in many ways and one of the ways is monetary we don't have the funds secondly the state has come out with the with what we can and what we should and shouldn't do in PE as well as other things and we we are within those guidelines, and, and again, they may not be right, but that's where we are. Um, the schools are working with these schedules, and I've got that same question. Where in the world are the kids going to fit PE into that schedule? Because they've got four classes they must take, and there's two electives. And this is the way we're going to go. It's not, it's not, uh, fiction, it's there. This is the way we're going to go. So what do we do with those two classes? Designate one as completely PE and the other one as electives? I don't know. It's not our decision. It's out there with the principals and with the superintendent and they're doing the best they can that I can see and I'd like to see exactly what you're going to come forth with because it may help us a little more to understand but again, I think it's important that this is not our decision. As much as we may agree, it's not our decision. And when you no, say well, principals no. and the superintendent, I would hope also that our staff, including the phys ed teachers, would be involved in the discussions as well. And, and I have to say I disagree somewhat with you saying this is not our decision. We decide that our class sizes are lower than what the state recommends. We to say we say what size our classrooms are. You know, the, the state can have standards and recommendations, but that does not preclude us from going above that. We shouldn't be going lower than it, right. but it doesn't mean that we can do something different that we feel is in the best interest of children in Montgomery County. And just because that schedule was put that way, and maybe we should have had more information as to the way things could, could play out with that around, uh, uh, besides the core classes, you know. As I said, I didn't agree with that move. Well, I certainly believe and that I was do, not. And I do believe that we have control over how that's offered in Montgomery County Schools. I was just going to say that I was not elected or trained to figure out scheduling of secondary education. And so that is why we have hired our administration and our teachers and our principals to do that. And I would not want to vote on how that is done as the school board whatsoever. Well, I would not well. want to be quote, misquoted as saying that I'm against physical. In some of our schools, you can still continue through the 12th grade of having PE. You know, it, it is more important now today than ever. And some of the decisions that have been made in public education around keeping our kids moving is part of the reason why they don't understand that they need to move. Because just like everything else we're teaching them, they use that every day. Well, understanding you can sit here and just do stuff, you know, and that's what they do. They don't understand movement and, and being physically involved and what that feels like. You know whether they like it or not and I absolutely agree with Ms. Bond in saying sometimes we have to be the adults in the situation and help kids understand what's going to be better for them in the long run um, so yeah I absolutely agree this board has some say so as to what's going on in these classrooms and how, how it's being delivered the experts can say this is what we need to do the standards and mandates can say this is what you're going to do but we do have some control over what's going on. 
And I would, uh, I don't want to belabor the point, but I agree with Ms. Franklin. I think it, that we are elected at times to stand up for what's right. And what's right in this situation is making sure that the kids get the physical education that they need. Um, I will say, and this is no disrespect to the superintendent and to the administrative staff, but had I known that the middle school model was going to, this is how it was going to flush out, I would not have voted for it. Um, that is not, not, it is, I was, it, to me it was just somewhat incredulous that with everything that we read in the paper, and it seemed like it was coincidence that we saw some of the articles in the paper, and then started getting emails about it, I just, I, I was a bit flabbergasted. Um, we, we have set up here, this board, I've been on this board for now 10 years, and we have had all, all these conversations about the obesity problem and the health problems that is attached to that. We've talked about it from the lunch school nutrition standpoint. We've talked about it in every angle. And I'll tell you right now, I don't care what the state says, <laughs> okay? I don't care what the Amen. state mandates when it comes to these kind of things, okay? We've ripped the arts away, Thank you. okay? We've pretty much destroyed the arts trying to get every, as much instructional time, and now we're going to strip away and destroy physical education, and it's just got to stop somewhere, and right here's where it's going to stop. It stopped right here at this board, okay? Um, I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy with the whole process, and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, these kids need education, and they need to be educated on how to eat, with, how to eat correctly. You know, they're not taught good nutrition, unfortunately, in a lot of areas. And that's part, we have control over that. I'm not, I don't consider it micromanaging. I don't consider it a question the experts. There are times when we need to step forward and say, this is what we're going to be. We got an article today sent to us from Bristol. And I would encourage people to read the article about what they're doing in physical education in Bristol. And Mark Lindeberg, who is a superintendent there in Bristol, and what he is doing. Mm -hmm. And it calls it the model of physical education. And I think that is the kind of things that we need to be doing related to physical education, is looking at who is doing things well and maybe seeing how we can model after that. Because also, too, we think that kids, some of these kids that are participating in middle school, are that's the only physical activity they get. They're not involved in sports. They may not play rec league and they may not play travel. So the only physical activity they get may be that one period of PE. So, uh, you know, from my standpoint, I think whatever model we've got, whatever it says, we're headed down the wrong track. And I don't like it and I think we need to fix it and I think this board is certainly within its purview to fix it. Um, we all may not agree, but I think that we need to certainly have some discussions when the superintendent brings it back to us. Um. Well, and if I may, a lot of talk has gone around school nutrition and lunches, and the state gives us guidelines, and, and some may disagree with me, but I'm a true believer. If we have physical activity that we're supposed to have, it doesn't matter if they eat six or eight baked french fries on their lunch plate every day. We don't have to worry about that so much if the kids are getting the activity level that they're supposed to get. When I was in the, you know, younger grades, we used to have to run the 600 every day before you could even play recess, and I hated it. <laughs> you know, I hated it. But you know what? We were smaller fourth graders back then probably than some of the fourth graders and fifth graders that we have now because I don't even know if they run the 600. And that's, I look back now and I think, wow, that was one of the best things that my teacher could have made me do is get out there and, and run my little honey around that field before rest <laughs> recess. But those are, those are things that we as adults need to make those decisions. So, and I feel like I'm elected by this community that pays taxes to give my voice on what they believe as parents of students. So I'm not educated in the PE process, but I wanna listen to what our community wants for their children. Well, I feel like I've already voiced my opinions by voting against the middle school model and voting against the budget. Um, and I do have a concern that we've approved this budget, and now we're going to have to go back and make some changes, possibly related to the budget. So I'm curious, where does that leave us now with the budget? 
I think it w what will happen is the superintendent will bring back things on the 17th and we'll have a discussion. In past years, we've had amendments to the budget. We've had changes to the budget. This, you know, the superintendent and her staff may go back and figure out how to rework the numbers and bring back what uh, changes we make. So uh, to me, it's um, it's not uh, it's a process we'll have to go through, and and we've been there before. But uh, I appreciate all the emails from the folks, and uh, we received quite a few of them. Um, we're going to get this right, hopefully. Any other comments or questions on the physical education aspect? If not, any other items of new business? Seeing no uh, items of new business, announcements and information. This is Teacher Appreciation Day, I believe, and Teacher Appreciation Week. And for those that are in the audience, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Teachers, for your staff, time. administrators, everybody. Uh, okay. no, I know it's a small number, but we certainly do appreciate your effort. Yeah. And thank you for your long hours and dedication to the division, but more importantly, the impact that you have on each and every student uh, in the division. Yes. Any other announcements and information? Yes, I was very excited to go last night to the Christiansburg Blacksburg Rotary Club, where they honored our students. All the high school principals were there and other school personnel and they honored 11th grade scholars from all of our schools and DECA, outstanding students. Um, they honored students that were chosen for their kindness and caring, two from each school. It was just um, very, very exciting and rewarding and um, I really thank the, the Christiansburg Blacksburg Rotary Club uh, for their commitment over these many, many years to our students and to the world, local and worldwide. It was awesome. I have one, Mr. Jones. Yes. Um, on April 24th, several of us attended the VSPA Blue Ridge Regional Meeting, and I believe Ms. Franklin <laughs> received a new position at that meeting. Okay. She's now regional chairman. Is that correct, Ms. Franklin? Yes, so Thank congratulations you. Congratulations. Hey. Oh, oh, bless you. <laughs> oh, oh. Thank you, Ben. We also had a student winner. Yes, yes, we did. First place in the high school category. Is awesome. That correct? Yes. In art. Yeah. In art. And yeah. So, you know, we'll continue to excel in the arts Super. as well. Yes. Uh, any other announcements or information? Um, just one reminder to the school board if you can attend on Thursday evening, it's beginning at 6 p.m., is the retirement uh, dinner. And we'll it's honoring there. our retirees and their dedication and service to Montgomery County Public Schools. If you can attend, we certainly would. I uh, appreciate you having your attendance there. Oh, uh, well, uh, would you be remind us where it's at? Holiday Inn. In Blacksburg. Blacksburg. Okay, where's that? Uh, it used to be the old Marriott. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, old Marriott. I hate to right. say it that way. Oh, no. That we all know it. That a lot about <laughs> me there. I should <laughs> say it that way. <laughs> we know it that way at Wendell. You're okay, we know that bro. <laughs> You're okay, bro. <laughs> anyway, um, so be sure if you can, you can attend that. Uh, we'll be adjourned. I'd like to know how many, oh. how many yeah. years of service total, if we can we could come up with that number oh. that would be a nice number to know how many total years of service we'll be honoring on Thursday evening. upcoming school board meetings you see May the 14th we have a joint meeting with the Board of Supervisors in the multi-purpose room it begins at 6 a 6 p.m. and the next board Wait. meeting will be on oh. the 21st and Wait, you see the agenda for that okay um, I probably should have uh, bought this up under old business but since it was agenda prep um, I would like to see some information as to where we're at with softball field at Christiansburg High School. You know, we've had some discussion about that and, you know, the cost and where it was supposed to be located and, you know, everything else that's going to be going on with as far as our discussion with that facility. I'd like to know where we're at with that. So. Any other items? Hearing none, I seek a motion for adjournment. So moved. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're now adjourned. Thank you all for your time and your attendance. Have a safe trip home.